finished watching uh, episode 16 of Twin Peaks season 3, The Return, No Knock, No Doorbell, and uh, watched it twice through, made extensive notes, as I always do, and uh, I'm going to go through a lot of stuff, so bear with me, this is extensive, um, I write down almost word for word for what they say, um, I can speculate a little bit of what I think is going on, but I think it's best to look at the next. And uh, here we go. Okay, so the episode is called no, Doc, no Knock, No Doorbell. At the very beginning, we see we're driving down a road, and Eva Cooper, Mr. C, and Richard are driving to an unknown location. Um, but we know it's probably the coordinates that Philip Jeffries gave uh, him. He says he's been given the coordinates by three different people, and two of the the people, the coordinates are the same. I think that would be Bill Hastings' secretary, Diane, and Philip would be the three. One was different. Perhaps Diane and Philip intentionally gave him the wrong coordinates to set him up. Um, Mr. C says, I'm looking for a place. Do you understand the place? Two of the three people gave me coordinates that match. What would you do, Richard? I'd check out the two that match. You're a very bright man. I'm noticing, too, that Evil Cooper, Mr. C, I don't know, whatever we call him, he had a weird voice before, and now it seems more normal. I don't know if that's uh, if anything's changed um, since the woodsman helped him or what. I don't know. And then it says... Um, Richard says it's right up there on that rock. We're going up there right now. And at that point, we see Jerry come running over a hill, and he sees people. He holds up his binoculars, and he holds them backwards uh, over one eye, and I'm pretty sure this kind of shows us that he's hallucinating or going crazy because he's been lost for so long, for about four or five days. Um, and then he says, Dear God, why did he say dear? God. Does he recognize something? Does he see something? Does he know what's going to happen? Did he recognize Cooper? We don't know. And then um, Mr. C says, I'm 25 years your senior. Take this and get up on that hill. It will be when you're close to make a continuous tone when you're on it. Let me know what you find out. When he gets to the spot, Richard is electrocuted and disintegrates from the bottom up. Uh, I don't know. If, well, it's not funny, but uh, it was interesting that we heard the scream even though the body's like was disintegrating and his lungs were gone His head was left and we still heard the scream um, Head was the last thing there and uh, Jerry witnessed this and threw his binoculars down and said bad 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 binoculars And then Mr. C says oh goodbye my son and then uh, Mr. C sends a text and we see on his phone that it's uh, 2 5 a.m says not delivered so maybe that was he was sent ranger who knows what and it looked like he did an emoticon for the smiley face and then wrote all the word all in capital letters in a period and it said not delivered we uh cut then to las vegas and this is during the day it's outside dougie's house Chantel and hutch are there and they have the place staked out disguised as painters she's eating cheese doughs <laughs> And it says later that she's down to her last bag. Um, she says, you hear that bird this morning? Sure shit did. I wonder why they say that. Like, it's significant. Like, what's the bird? Is it some sort of warning that they should have paid attention to? Who knows? Then the FBI show up. No one is home. Uh, they leave Agent Wilson to stake up the house while the others go to Lucky 7 to find Cooper. They leave. Or Dougie, rather. Uh, then we go to the hospital in Las Vegas. Dougie is in a coma. Excuse me. The final signs are good. Sonny Jim talks much more now uh, in these episodes. And Bushnell shows up. Then Sonny Jim asks, does a coma have something to do with electricity? And Bushnell says, in this case, yes. The Mitchum brothers show up with food, well wishes, and offer to stock up the house. We just want to be as helpful as possible and pay our respects. He looks good. And they said... If I could trouble you for a key so that they can go to this house and stock up. Uh, and they say, it was like what? Electricity? Cut South Dakota, Gordon Cole. S standing in the room with all those machines there. And the buzzing machine seems to almost be in sync with the hospital. Sounds like the ventilator sounds. 
and then we go back to the hospital in Las Vegas. Sunny Jim and Jenny go take Sunny Jim to the little boys' room. Bushnell gets a call that the FBI are looking for Dougie, and uh, lucky seven people said sent them to the hospital. They said they're on the way, and then cut back to Dougie's house. Chantel and Hutch stake out the house. The FBI are staking out the house down the street. And then he said, remember that guy, Sammy? He passed away, he was a good guy. I owe him money. Um, these scenes kind of seem like a um, Quentin Tarantino show, and maybe that's you know, what they he was going for with casting um, uh, Roth and, and uh, others, who knows. But even the conversation seems very much like um, Quentin Tarantino. Anyways, um, Mitchum shows up. Mitchum shows up with the crew to stock the fridge. Uh, and they say it looks like a circus and uh, Hutch says to her are you on the rag the fuck if I was um, and then we see so Zawaski accounting and very politely he says hello you are in front of my driveway and then Hutch says we're not in your driveway we're not even close to your fucking driveway so go fuck yourself and then he looks mad and says I move car he goes back in his car and um, hits their man. He revs the engine, almost like the one-armed man in Fire Walk With Me, how he was revving the engine. Um, Chantel gets mad and tries to shoot him. He misses. He goes into his trunk, pulls out a gun, and shoots Chantel in the arm. Uh, she, she says he winged me. Hutch goes to shoot at him. They take off. She backs up the van, hits the car, which then makes the guy go flying because he's behind the car. And as they go, he pulls out his gun, which is like an Uzi, and just unloads everything that he has uh, for rounds into the uh, van, killing, I assume, Hutch and Chantel while their car slowly moves forward. And the Mitchum say, what the fuck kind of neighborhood is this? <laughs> People under a lot of stress, Bradley. Then we see the FBI come out, put the gun down, he does, and they call for backup. This all takes place by the house where, like across the street where the, we saw earlier in the season where the junkie woman was living with her son. It's not the same house, it's probably the neighbor, uh, but it's close. And um, um, Mitchum say, put away your gun, get, let's get the girls and get out of here. And go back to the hospital, we hear the ringing tone, and it's the same tone as that we hear at the Great Northern Hotel. And uh, Bushnell hears it and he uh, goes out the, out of the room looking for it. The one-armed man appears in the chair. Cooper springs up and takes up the ventilator, just boom, pulls it out and says, you are awake. Cooper says, 100%. Finally, the other one, he didn't go back in. He's still out. Take this, and it's the owl ring. And we hear high-pitched tone. And then Cooper says, do you have the seed? Do you have the seed? I need to, I need to make another one. And he pulls out a piece of hair and gives it to the one-armed man. And so I assume this is to make a Dougie Topa, like another Dougie maybe to give to Janie and Sunny Jim. I assume that's what it is, but who knows. And then um, he says, I understand. And the one I'm saying, I understand, is the same as when, I think episode one, when um, the fireman is talking to Cooper, he says, I understand. Uh, Cooper has the ring and hides it, and in comes Sunny Jim Janie. Uh, he knows everyone and everything that's happened. He says, hello, Janie. Hi, hello, Sunny Jim. He knows everything. He knows Bush no moment. He knows everything that's been going on while he's been dugging. Uh, he says, doctor, will you confirm my, confirm my vitals? Oh, okay, I'm leaving. Cooper is in charge. He's in charge. He's back. Um, he says, has a plan. Cooper asks to borrow a gun from Bush no. Uh, Rod, I'm bringing my family to the lobby of the casino in 20 minutes, and then I need a place to Spokane, Washington. So he calls the missions and uh, gets them to help him out. And then uh, says, girls, we're going on a plane ride. And as soon as we hear the girls who are going on a plane ride, we hear uh, Falling, the intro, the uh, theme song to uh, Twin Peaks, the instrumental of it. So it's like, return, here we go. Here's the return, right? Uh, I have a feeling a man, and Cooper says, I have a feeling a man named Gordon Cole will call. If he does read him this message, Cooper shakes Bushnell's hand. You are a fine man, Bushnell moans. I will not soon forget your kindness and decency. What about the FBI? And this is awesome because he looks at the camera, breaks the fourth wall, very naughty. Um, 
he does it and says, I am the FBI. Awesome. That's what we were waiting for. Great moment. Um, then we see Jenny Wingram. He says, move over, I'll drive. And uh, at that moment, as they're pulling away, the FBI show up at the hospital. And uh, as he's driving, Sonny Jim says, Dad can drive. Really good. Cut back to South Dakota and Buckhorn. Diane uh, receives a text during the day. So if you remember at night at like 2 in the morning, uh, Mr. C sent the text and she's getting it in the afternoon. It says on her phone she receives it at 432 or 1632. Uh, she shudders. The music stops and we hear a wind sound. Uh, she looks in her bag. We see the gun. She says, I remember. Oh, cool. I remember. She sends some coordinates. And the numbers that she gives uh, is 485 And the number that Philip Jeffries um, gave him was 480551. So that third number uh, Philip gave was a zero. And in the text, she has it as a five. So um, we know that number is slightly different. And she says, I hope this works, whatever that means. Um, and now the time is different. Like when she first received the text, it said on the phone 1632. And now on the phone, it says the message came at 1644. So why is it different? Why is it off by a few minutes? I don't know. Uh, she sends the reply and shutters. Uh, she gets up and we hear a song called American Woman. It's kind of like slow motion thing. She's very deliberate. She's going uh, she's going back to Cord's room. And it sounds like the sound is being slowed down. Um, there's a lyric, before I take my orders from any old man. Uh, maybe that's a reference from taking orders from Mr. C. Who knows? Cole's in the room and he senses uh, she's at the door. And, she, and he says, come on in, Diane. And the music stops. Uh, could it be because he has his hearing aid up really loud and he hears the footsteps? Who knows? She looks nervous. She sits in a chair. It's maybe a possible link to this is the chair episode. Um, who knows? You asked me about the night Cooper came to visit me. Cole notices she's looking at her purse and she is nervous. And it sounds like there's a phone going off. I don't know if it's a phone going off or it's just the sound of the FBI equipment. Who knows? She says it was three, maybe four years after it happened, after I stopped hearing from Coop. I was still working at the bureau. One night, no knock, no doorbell. That's our name of our episode. He just walked in. I was standing in my living room. I was so happy to see him. I held him so close. And we sat on my sofa, started talking. I wanted to hear everything about where he had been for the last few years. He only wanted to know what had been going on at the bureau. It was like he was grilling me. He leaned in to kiss me. It only happened once before. Now what that meant about why, what happened once before, who knows? But as soon as his lips touched mine, something went wrong, and I felt afraid. He saw the fear in me, and he smiled. And his face, whatever that means, and when it started. Uh, maybe his face changes, like maybe when Mr. C's in the jail cell, and we see the superimposed of Bob on there, who knows. And then she says, he raped me. He raped me. Afterward, he took me somewhere, an old gas station. She says gas station, so obviously this is like the woodsman. And then she looks at the test, the text of gas, and we see like a close-up of the, the text. And then she says, I'm in the sheriff's station. I'm in the sheriff's station. And I'm wondering if she is connected to Nido. Uh, that seems almost like Diane, uh, an anagram of that, kind of. Uh, I think I'm spelling it right, but there's no E in Nido. I don't know. I sent him those coordinates. I'm in the sheriff's station because I'm not me. I'm not. And I wonder if she's saying I'm in the sheriff station, if that has anything to do with people being held in the sheriff station. She reaches for a gun, but Albert already has his and shoots her. And at the same time, Tammy does too. So it shows that they're in sync, that they're paying attention. Uh, she is hit and her body disappears in the air. It goes whoosh. And it was almost like when Laura Palmer disappeared from the red room. And then Tammy says, they're real. That was a real Tulpa. Warren Cole says, Sheriff Station. Next scene, we're in the red room. We see Diane in the chair. We hear the one-armed man says, someone manufactured you. And she says, I know. Fuck you. <laughs> and then 
her jaw is cracking, her face is cracking, and then her head disappears and whoosh, And then we see the seed is left behind, just like when Dougie disappeared. Uh, and it's electricity, kind of like when Richard was killed. They talk a lot about electricity. And then we're back at the Silver Mustang Casino, and then we see that Cooper says goodbye to Janie E and Sonny Jim. Um, Dougie is talking with more assurance, and they said maybe it's the side effects of the coma. Says goodbye, and um, the song in the background almost sounds like the song that was playing uh, when the boy was hit by the car, I think in episode six. I don't know if it's the same, but it sounds very similar to that. Um, like a goodbye song, who knows? You're my dad. I am your dad, and I love you both. You'll see me soon. I'll walk through that red door, and I'll never leave. Don't go. I have to. She kisses Cooper. She says, whoever you are, thank you. Cooper tells the Mitchum brothers who he is. Well, we know that because uh, the Mitchum brothers say, okay, so let me get this straight. You know, uh, your nephew I had been missing for 25 years. We need to get you to town to a town called Twin Peaks, this sheriff station. Um, and they said, well, you know, our type of guys, they're not looked too kindly at a sheriff station. And Cooper says, I am witness to the fact that you both have hearts of gold. And then at the Roadhouse, we see Lady Jill and Edward Lewis uh, Severson. Of course, is Eddie Better. Um, I noticed on the microphone there's like a pineapple at the end. I don't, I wasn't paying attention to see if other episodes if that was the case, but uh, who knows? Kind of almost like the thing that, that Andy was carrying. It almost looked like pineapple. Like, who knows? I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Or like the kind of Hawaiian guitar thing uh, when we see kind of the red room. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, lyrics and song. I am M R N I am who I am. Who I was and I will never be. And then at this point we see Audrey and Charlie walk in. Uh, they toast with martinis. Here's to us, Audrey. And she says, here's to Billy. And they toast with two martinis. And then we hear Audrey's dance. And then I noticed in the background there was an old cash register, like even where they are, it appears like there's no new technology. You never noticed maybe there's a regular cash register at the, the uh, roadhouse. I don't know. But again, we see like no sign of uh, new technology. And something that this is not like a theory about what's going to happen, but it seems that even in the original Twin Peaks, Audrey seemed kind of stuck in the 50s. Like her style, her sweater, everything was kind of like styled from the 50s. It almost seems like she's still kind of stuck in there. Um, who knows, but just something I'm noticing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Audrey's dancing, and the crowd moves to the side. The song starts, and Audrey starts dancing. Uh, and I remember back in the original episode, she said something about, isn't it dreamy? Isn't it like a dream? Something about a dream. Um, the song starts, and Audrey starts dancing slow, and she's wearing some sort of ring on her right hand. And I don't think it's the owl ring. I tried to like brighten and zoom in. Um, maybe it is. I don't think it is, but she's definitely wearing some sort of ring on her hand. Uh, later, the crowd is swaying in time, side to side, all of the same. Uh, and then we hear Monique. Monique. Uh, there's a scream. That's my wife, asshole. And then this uh, man attacks a man. It's very similar to the scene with James, where James is like saying hi to that guy's wife. Uh, and this guy hits a man over the head with a beer bottle. And then Audrey kind of sees this and freaks out and runs to Charlie and says, Charlie, get me out of here. And then we see a flash to Audrey looking in the mirror. She's got no makeup on. She looks different. Her hair's kind of down. It's all white, uh, almost like an institution. We hear an electrical sound when, when that happens. Um, who knows? Uh, electric, and again, electric spark when we see Audrey look in the mirror. Um, electric sounds, and then we hear Audrey's dance playing out, but it sounds weird, almost like it's backwards. And that's the end of the episode. Okay, so we only have 17, 18 left next week. Um, maybe a two hour show. What a wonderful episode this was. Um, you know, I was kind of expecting kind of a weird thing, almost like an episode eight, like some weird thing was happening, but it wasn't. Weird, well, I mean, it was weird. There was weird parts, but it was just like so satisfying to see Cooper back, to see um, him take charge, to see it, you know, all that good stuff. Um, you know, all the nostalgic things that a lot of the hard
hardcore Twin Peaks fans were waiting for finally happened. And you know what? Like when I saw Cooper come out and you could tell it was Cooper, like I went, wow, you know, I cheered it. It's an awesome moment. Um, yeah, great episode. Really, really looking forward to what how this turns out. I'm really scared uh, because there's only two more hours left. Um, what a, a lot of this stuff has to do, there's so many other loose ends, uh, like so many other characters, like all those young kids on drugs and the fights and Billy and um, Shelly's daughter, like are those gonna come back? Are we gonna see what happens with that? What is going on with Audrey? Who is the dreamer? Uh, it almost seems like some sort of dream that she's dreaming, but uh, there's one, way more going on, who knows? So uh, thanks again, comment um, below and like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.